This is the Power Break Podcast number 125, titled, Where's Your Integrity? Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and... Go to the Power Break Podcast link. There you go, JT. What happened? What did I do? I got it all out. You got it all out? I was just wondering what happened. I mean, you're actually in here. If we were on video today, you would say that JT is a little hindered. Yeah, I broke my little pinky finger on my left hand, which is a problem for a guitarist, but I'll get over it at some point. Hopefully. Wow. So is it going to be six weeks before you can play the guitar? No, I'm actually going to play this weekend, but I'm going to do this thing. Um, it's called an Ebo, and basically it allows you to basically play the guitar with one finger, but it sounds like a mix between a guitar and a um, keyboard. It's really pretty neat, a synthesizer. Really? Yeah, it's really pretty cool. So I'm just going to do that because they have another guitarist doing the lead lines. So, Wow. Yeah, so I'm still going to get up there and have thought, a good time, man. Who would have ever thought? Now, explainify what happened because you were doing something <laughs> with uh, explainify and say, okay, JT, what happened? Yeah, what's, yeah. what's the truth of this story? Yeah, well, it was, you know, one of those normal, you know, hold my beer moments. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Hold yeah, my beer. Okay. Yeah, that's the big joke is yeah. everything right before you get hurt, you always go, hey, man, I'm going to try that. Hold my beer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. and that was like, uh, that's what you said when you broke your ankle or twisted your your ankle or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do broke, a skateboarding. Broke trip. my ankle skateboarding, yeah. Man, look at that. I mean, These just, kids of yours are trying to kill you. Yeah, they might be, but we're going to have a good time on our way through the whole thing. So. <laughs> um, but no, I went mountain biking and... Yeah, I ended up smashing uh, into a tree, basically, and that was that was kind of that. And I looked down, and I was like, oh, man, my pinky's pointed in the wrong direction. That's Whoa. not good. Yeah. yeah. So. That problem, did it ever happen when you played football? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, actually, the finger right next to it was funny. One of my friends was like, that was with us. He goes, ah, man, you really, because I was planning on continuing to ride, you know, because I wanted to, you know, set a good example for my kids not to be a baby. But... He was like, nah, it's pointed in the wrong direction. He goes, look at it compared to the one next to it. I was like, uh-uh, the one next to it's already <laughs> crooked from football. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. So. Oh, the glories of playing college oh, football. Oh, my gosh, I'm telling man. You. Yeah, I've, I've certainly hurt myself more than enough. I'm sure you got some great stories, yeah, too, because yeah, yeah. I seem to remember your knees pointed in directions that I wasn't even sure they were allowed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, that was it. Well, let's take a time here and just thank everybody <laughs> for listening to the Power Break podcast and also for your taking time to put up a rating and a review of the Power Break podcast wherever you download the podcast and also helping us to spread the word about the Power Break podcast via social media or word of mouth. We appreciate it very much. Thank you very much for doing that. We do. Yeah, it's awesome stuff and it is so humbling and man, I'm just glad we can help some people if that in fact is what's going on out there, Bob. We appreciate folks downloading our podcast. So how do you define integrity. Ah, that's what you do and nobody's looking. That is exactly right. That's yep. a good answer. And I will tell you, I think about integrity a lot. And I think as a police officer, I would tell every single police officer, you better think about this every day. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I won't bend on because I've seen too much lack of integrity in law enforcement for me not to be good with that. And, you know, it, the simple truth is this, you know, we... A, we work for people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, B, we work for God. So even if you are a law enforcement officer who is not a Christian, right? Because I try, you know, when it comes to that, I understand not everybody is a Christian. So I can't say, hey, you work for the big man because they're going to sit there and argue with me for that. But I can tell you, you work for the citizens. Mm -hmm. And I can promise you they demand integrity. And that's something that I think, you know, in law enforcement in general, we've kind of allowed ourselves to be just like the general public, because in all honesty, the general public has lost a lot of integrity, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, going back to Christians, that. That's the standard, too, is, is going it down is. because we want to be yep. like everybody. But yep. So let's just drop back and say, okay, JT, you've made a, a definition of integrity, talked about the real need for it. How do you keep yourself in the way of integrity? 
You know something? Number one, I don't, I don't listen to my heart. And uh, that's something you're going to find throughout scripture is, you know, the, the heart is going to lead you in a bad direction. I also don't let my tongue get out of control because it'll lead me in a pretty bad direction. And I make sure that everything that I do is consistent with scripture. There you go. So if it's against scripture, then I know there's probably no integrity in that. So, yeah. How about you, my friend? Well, um, being a man who is dedicated to the word of God in, in my profession and also in my profession as uh, my life as a follower of Jesus Christ, the Word of God has an utmost importance, and that's where you step back every day and feed on the Word, and, and um, you know, I'm getting ready to, for this Sunday as we record this to preach on the, the gift of repentance that God gives us uh, with repentance, yes. and uh, there was an old Puritan who wrote and said that Christians should be... Um, the greatest at confessing and repenting. <laughs> and yeah, that, I agree reason, with that. And the reason yeah. is because the more you mature in your spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, the more sensitive you are to areas that need confessing and repenting. Yeah, that's right. And so, uh, and to confess and repent is not a sign that you're of weakness. It's a sign of strength. It's also a sign that you're living close to the Lord because the closer you are to light, the more it exposes the flaws, right? That is correct. And so as we're walking close to the Lord, we should be very quick about repenting. So, yeah, the more I think that the more you're in the Word of God and allow the Word of God to be in you, yep. okay, and guide your steps, as it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, yep. in Psalm 119, that, that really has an effect. Well, there is a shortage of true integrity today. We'd all agree to that. So it pays to know how we can be people of integrity. And one thing for sure that we can think about and have it right in our fingertips is the fact that we need to grow in our integrity. And if not, we are set for a great fall. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. Yeah. And that includes the area of integrity. Yeah. Well, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Um, folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, I would always encourage you to get over there and sign up for Bob's blog. It'll pop in your email every Monday, and it's just a great way to start your week. And, of course, this blog is entitled, Where's Your Integrity? So let's talk more about that. Well, as I wrote in the uh, the blog, in, on this uh, blog titled, Where's Your Integrity? I start out with Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. And here's what it reads, that for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Uh, have you ever been asked, where's your integrity today? That's what I wrote in the article, and it's a common place to see famous people on television make excuses for not keeping their word. Sadly, the epidemic has spread. It is hard to find people who keep their word and are on time for appointments rather than keep people waiting and actually do what they say they will do. In the scripture text that we've considered from Proverbs, Solomon points out that God notices our integrity and is quick to reward it with wisdom, understanding, and protection. Of course, you could say that all integrity comes from God to begin with as we rely upon him and live to please him. Yeah, that's exactly right, because God's word is truth. So we have to rely on that, and that's our integrity. Right. You know, throughout Scripture, I'm always, um, you know, at first when, when I looked at the way Christ treated the Pharisees, I was like, man, you know, that's pretty harsh in a lot of ways. But I think about it, and it's because of how little integrity they had. Oh, yeah. They're very quick to point out faults of others and, yes. and add rules and regulations upon the law that made it, you know, to took away from the law. And yet, when he pointed out in their lives, they didn't live up to even their own standards. No, they didn't even come close. They were hypocrites. Right. And that's something that is so distasteful to Christ throughout the whole thing. So I know that... You know, there are very few things when I look at Christ's example and the way he lived his life when he was here on earth, man, integrity was humongous to him. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, there was, he's the only man that lived without any faults. Yeah. I can't even fathom that. Yeah. I can't even fathom being James. <laughs> you could only be like your big brother. <laughs> Poor guy. Half brother. So, like. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And all on his law he meditates day and night. So the integrity of a person's life is really a heart issue. 
people who continue to overcommit themselves. They are always late for appointments, have a real heart problem. Yeah. And they're also one who take on more than they can handle to fill the, the void in their lives or – so they wrapped up with themselves. They care little about the other people involved in the appointment. People who make commitments and do not live up to them or also have a heart issue. And there's a lack of respect of, for truth, which is really a lack of respect for God and his word. Yeah, man. And that's a sobering reality, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah. Well, the article went on to talk about the various cases of integrity, but really, as I pointed out, integrity does come from dependency. We depend on God to live with integrity. We find the promoting, or the, really the promoting and the prompting of the Holy Spirit uh, with wisdom from God and the grace to fulfill promises that we've made. In fact, even to make those promises, dependency on him is crucial, otherwise we're doomed to fail. Again, from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, therefore let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So really, if you think you, I can handle this situation, don't tell me about this. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work out very fall. well. Yep. So the question is, how is your integrity? Can others count on you, what you say, what you promise? Are you living up to your promises made before God and others? about marriage vows and about your church membership vows. God expects us to be people of integrity that rely upon him, that fear him and live by his word. In doing so, there is great reward. Yeah, and setting yourself up for this to be successful. You know, I, I, I don't. one of the things that you and I have talked about so much on this podcast is about you learn to be better at all of this. Being a Christian is about sanctification and changing the way mm -hmm. that your mind works and how you look at the world around you and how you perceive your responsibility to God. All that stuff is a, it's a training, right? right. This, this world is a training. This time that we live is a training ground. Exactly. Right. right. So set yourself up for success, you know, add look in scripture. It talks about, you know, people who don't take counsel from other people are going to fail. Right. So do that and learn to be good at taking that. Right. Even when they say things you don't like, it's okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's actually what has caused me to grow so many times. You know, I know it's shocking to everybody, but me and Bob don't always agree. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, something I cherish your opinion, and that's something that we haven't been very good at as people in general is cherishing other people's opinion, taking it in, thinking about mm -hmm. it and being accepting of it, you know, when it comes to what's going to be beneficial for all of us together, right? We're supposed to work together and we're supposed to, you know, so I keep counsel, you know, I keep counsel that I know is in the word so they can reel me back if I make that mistake. So I don't set myself up to make a big mistake. Right. That's right. And then, so we rely upon God and we realize that God puts people in our lives to help us that way. Yes. And so just realizing to make that a, a real key issue in your life to live by integrity. Anyway, the article is called, uh, how is your integrity or where is your integrity? And you'll find it at bobbrubaker.com. So what else is going on, Bob? Any news we need to know about this week? Thought we'd offer the book to follow up on this whole thing about integrity, the, the battle for the mind. When you my favorite, <laughs> how I knew you would come through with that. Yep, uh, unrehearsed, folks. This unrehearsed. Is, I just knew that JT favorite. would say that. It's the battle for the mind. It took several issues and uh, scriptural points and took them through. And actually, it's a collection of different articles that I've written for the Power Break blog in the past. Anyway, the battle for the mind is yours. If you go to bobbrubaker.com, click on the links for the resources. Go down to the books and it'll give you ways that you can order the book and get your own copy check it out it's called the battle for the mind very key issue of uh, following with integrity to know what god has to say about it in his word and while you're at bobrubaker.com check out the sermon links that um, sermons i preach here at christ community presbyterian church in clearwater and currently going through a series uh, we call it advent series you know and i'm just taking a, a series on the fact that uh, you know we saw often talks about the Christmas gifts and everything else. Yeah, right. Some call it the gifts that are ours that come out of the incarnation. And last oh, time was, awesome, a, was the gift of uh, adoption, and this week I'm talking about the gift of repentance. You may not think of that as a gift, but that's what it says in God's Word, and so we're exploring that this week. Anyway, check it out. The sermon links of all the sermons I preach here, there's a link to it at uh, the, my website, bobrubaker.com. Check it out today. 
All right, so here we go. It's time for What About This? That's time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering it on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Let's go right to question number one, and I love this question. So why is a constant inspection of the heart so important to living a life of integrity? Because we get comfortable and we forget the constant part. That's, That's right. right. That's right. You know, we always have to check ourselves. Well, it's easy to fool ourselves, and it's easy to fool others, but it's impossible to fool God. Amazing how that works. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10, read this way. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And then the words, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. All right. So we need to inspect ourselves. We need to constantly realize, I need help. Yeah. And as you pointed out, sometimes God brings people in our lives to point out needs of change or lacks of integrity. Yep. Okay. Sometimes we read God's word and it's the spirit of God who brings the word of God to light. As it says in the book of Hebrews, that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the thoughts and you're even in your intentions of the heart. Right. So he'll make it clear. Psalm 139, he says, the, here's what David's prayer was. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, when I sit down, you know, when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar, you search out my path and my life down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I cannot attain it. And then he, he concludes Psalm 139. I encourage you to check it out, but listen to this. He says this, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there's any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What a great prayer. Yeah, it is a great prayer. It's yeah. a great way to start today and realize I don't know myself, but God knows me inside and out. He even knows my thoughts before I think them and my words before I speak them and the deeds before I do them. That's right. That's right. And so, Lord, put a guard on me. Help me to get it right. In Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of the scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Even the scriptures itself, it says that scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching. And notice for this, for reproof and for correction and for training. Yeah, think about how many times you have found yourself. I know in my own personal life, I find myself afterwards going, why did I do that again? Yeah. And that was just as dumb as it gets. But and it's usually I don't, I don't start off that day when I make those mistakes with the search me um, and, and guide yeah. me and be with me and make me conscious of your presence. So I'm thinking about it. You know, I, um, I always think about Jonah when he's at the very bottom of the ship. Right. Yeah. Trying to hide from God, but he can't. Yeah. Right. The storm is raging outside and he just goes lower in the ship. Yeah. <laughs> like he's trying to get away from you can't get away from the presence of God. So, you know, it, 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 in that wrestling that Jonah had with his own integrity and the knowledge of the fact that I can't no matter what I do, God's going to put me where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know that I don't want to be the wrestler like Jonah. Yeah. Why can't you just go along with it and enjoy the ride? Because that's really what God wants. He wants joy in your life. You know, right. and there's no joy trying to hide from him. No, there's not. As a matter of fact, you know, some people are afraid to confess their even their sins before God because they're afraid God's going to let them have it. You think he doesn't know about it? <laughs> that's the best part. And <laughs> actually, he says, if we confess our sins, admit our faults yeah. before him, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness taking us back into fellowship because when we hold on to sin, it robs us of that fellowship with God. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's a good point that you brought, brought up about Jonah because so many times we're like Jonah. We, we think we're going to get away from it. Yep. And I, that's one reason why every day I try to be mindful of praying with sincerity, not just going over it, but praying that God would protect me from myself. You know, I, I mean, I make a lot of dumb choices, especially if like if I'm doing you know, physical activity as in <laughs> repairing things, whatever. And, and I, I just make dumb choices. You know, I've done really? that. I mean, I have walked off trying to fix something on the roof one time we owned a house. I walked right off. 
I, I would step back to look at my, the work that I did. I put up one of those vents. Okay? Oh, I stepped gosh. back to look at it, and I walked off the roof and fell into the bushes, thankfully. Thank you know, goodness I mean, I've you done fell in the a lot bushes. of dumb things, and so I, I have to ask the Lord every day to protect me from myself. Okay, yeah. and and I put in there, you know, words that were used like Job, Job, and David. God uh, put a guard over my mouth, put a guard over my thoughts, put a That's guard on my heart. Me, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. because I know I'm. I'm, if I'm have a tendency, I'd run wild. And I think that's why we need to pray every day that God would protect us from ourselves and from the world and the devil. Yeah. And we need that. Anyway, those thoughts of relying upon God is a key factor in keeping our integrity. Well, let's turn to question number two, and that's from the mental aspect of things. So you mentioned during question number one um, and in your article that integrity flows from dependency. Which is very counterintuitive to what you'll be taught by our world today. Exactly. Our world is all about independence, and you're going to get it done, and I, my, 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 man. You can do it. Oh, my gosh, yeah. No no more false words than that. But anyway, how can we mentally live in dependency so we live a life of integrity? Well, just stop and think about a person who displays a lack of integrity. Now, just as you picture that person, think of how that person doesn't have a clue of how desperate he or she is and how they're missing the mark. That's right. I mean, even if you bring it up, oh, I didn't miss the mark. It's I, crazy. I mean, and so likewise, the road to a lack of integrity begins with the steps down the road of isolation and self-reliance because soon we'll judge our actions by ourselves and we'll justify ourselves by by ourselves, yeah. and it's not good. Nope. Remember, uh, there was a guy named Adam who was in the garden, and he and his wife sinned by taking of the tree of the knowledge of fruit of the n- tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's right, right. And they immediately realized they were naked, right? And so they sewed fig leaves, and then God came down as He normally did in the cool of the evening, and and He said, "Adam, where are you now?" He didn't need to know where Adam was. He wanted Adam to know where Adam was. <laughs> and Adam was hiding. And he said, uh, why were you hiding? He says, because I'm naked. And he says, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, well, it's that woman you gave to me. Of course, yeah. Of course. Well, you, know, you don't and, want to take blame for And it. She, uh, she gave me the fruit. And then the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you've done? And what did she say? It's the serpent that deceived me. Right? And, of course, as the old preacher said, the serpent didn't have a leg to stand on. That's right. <laughs> oh, that was good, man. That was really good. I wondered uh, if you would get that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. After, okay. after a split second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when asked how your integrity is, and the question is, can others count on you and what you say and what you promise? Or are you living up to your promises made before God and others? God expects us to be people of integrity that rely on him that fear him, that live by his word. And doing so, there is great reward, as it says in Psalm 19, uh, by keeping the law of the Lord and being mindful of the law of the Lord. So the, the, going back to the, the, you know, the original question, how does, what's it display? It displays, first of all, when we don't have a dependency on God, it, it, we're, we're dep- depending on ourselves to keep our integrity. And we do a poor job of it. I was going to say, there's no bigger clown for me to work for than myself. Yeah. (laughs) And if we judge ourselves by ourselves, okay, that's never going to do. But when we look at God's standard, okay, and we look at God's word by God's, and know it's God's standard, and we live by that, we have to say to him, Lord, I can't do this. And we depend on him, and that gives us the road to success in keeping our integrity. Yeah. All right, let's turn to question number three, which, as everybody knows, is the physical aspect of life. And, you know, we probably should have talked about this a couple of weeks ago going into the holidays. But we're going to address it now because it is really important. And it's something that every year I will make some pretty large mistakes in what I eat. (laughs) And that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And it is okay. But we should talk more about it. How can we stay disciplined? Um in regard to our food food intake during the holidays and how can we make sure that, you know, even though we're enjoying ourselves a little bit, we're not falling completely off, you know, the spectrum. Well, it's one thing for sure that you, you can't get it off once you take it on. I'm as far as say, if you ate a real big meal and you say, I'm just going to go out and work out. Yeah. It won't happen. happen. It won't happen. happen. So the bottom line is you eat, you work out before you eat. 
before that big meal, just go out and, and really do a hard, hard workout. Because then, even if you take in carbs, your body is so in need of replenishing. That's right. You're going to blow it out anyway. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, that's one thing, you know, and I, I think the before uh, is very important. Before the Thanksgiving meal, I think I was telling you that I rode with the boys 83 miles and my whoop said I burned. Okay. This is whoop saying this. I didn't. We said I burned 3,400 calories. I totally believe that. Yeah. Totally believe yeah. it. I remember when you and I did that day one of the ride across Florida, I think I was at just under 6,000. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And that allowed me to have like three waffles and like a whole bunch of oatmeal. Man, I was, a, I was a, me and you ate like idiots that morning, if I remember That's correctly. Right. We, they, we stayed at a hotel with a breakfast buffet and we really buffeted our body. Oh boy, we? that was awful. But you know something? It was all gone by like lunch. I oh mean, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. Cause the, the next day we had some hills actually in Florida through San Antonio and, uh, the one place in Florida yeah, besides place, North yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah exactly. So anyway, that, yeah, that's a good idea. Anyway, the bottom line is it takes discipline to do that. And so what did you do on Thanksgiving morning, by the way? I actually got up and went for a run. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I yeah. went for a run. Actually, I, I went for a swim, too. So after I got done with the run, I jumped in the pool, got a little cold therapy in, right. and it was chilly. I didn't even wear my um, my wetsuit. So I went right in there and let her have it. <laughs> and, and then I took a very warm shower. <laughs> you had your cold therapy for the day. I did. I did. I, I could warm up again. Well, the bottom line is, is a great, good suggestion. Before the big meal, have a good big workout, and uh, that does help to calm things. But keep in control of things, and that takes discipline. And as we point out every time, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobRubaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 125. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobrubaker.com. And listen for Bob's answer or my answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Real quick, let me just uh, put in another word for the book, The Battle for the Mind. It does will help you keep that integrity. Just uh, realize how important your mind is and how God addresses things of the mind and, of course, of the body and of the soul, too. So check it out. It's The Battle for the Mind at bobrubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.